we're just going to be talking about um, MST's collaborative working um, with, with CAMS and um, how that's kind of worked. If it's worked well, if it hasn't kind of worked well, really. So we, we just thought we'd just have a little bit of a conversation um, with James. So James, kind of first um, question. So now we've kind of crossed paths in, 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 in a variety of ways um, in terms of cases. So can you kind of think of a case, whether it's a recent case or a past case, whereby actually having MST um, involved has actually been really kind of helpful um, in terms of you as a professional, in terms of you working within CAMS? Yeah, there was a there was a case uh, a number of years ago that had, it was already engaged or had engaged in MST, um, and it was great. I think for, for my, in my role, because uh, when they come to me, we're looking at the referred child, so we're looking at it from the context of a mental health condition specifically and the treatment of that mental health condition. And I, um, whereas I guess your guys' remit might be slightly different, what you did do was it was that socialisation to the systemic way of thinking. The idea that it's not rooted in one individual, but rooted in a systemic understanding of what's going on. And, and I, you know, if you were trying to set up a service that was uh, kind of like gold standard, you'd want that collaboration between across services. We were just kind of wondering where, how we're going to work together, um, whether it'd be better for one service to work first, etc. And I think that, that's a good thing about um, MST and CAMS, that we have those conversations. Yeah, um, absolutely. And certainly when you think about step down from inpatient, with it, which was this, this case specifically was on about where the mandate from a discharge was family therapy, whereas the, the remit behind that family therapy was a bit more specific. It wasn't as simple as, well, let's just give family therapy. Actually, what they're after was an NVR approach. They were, at, they were after very structured um, intervention that would benefit the parents in the management of uh, their child and the difficulties that they were presenting with and actually they'd already done quite a lot of MVR work within um, inpatient which isn't necessarily a prerequisite within CAMS and mm -hmm. so actually the MST service is far better suited in that in that position to deliver that intervention you know and rather as saying taking it on we can have that collaborative discussion to kind of formulate what's the best approach for this young person prior to discharge which I think is really important but we've also got that dialogue that if it needs to be escalated to CAMS that, you know, me and you know each other, Andrea, and, you know, I've got a good relationship with Lloyd as well. So we can be responsive and, and more proactive in the needs of the of the young people that we're working with. Yeah, definitely. It's about looking at the young person's needs, isn't it? And, and working yeah. out what's best for them and, and what service at the right time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Do you both want to um, introduce yourselves, first of all? Yeah. Josh, do you want to start? Yeah, um, so hi guys, Josh Merrick, uh, Horizons Exploitation Worker for Samwell Children's Trust. Hi, my name's Charlene Parker and I'm an MST therapist from MST in Sandwell. Okay, brilliant. So I'm aware that you've worked together lots with a number of, of families in Sandwell. Um, can you describe kind of how you've worked together and kind of how your roles have complemented each other? Um, I think from from my perspective, so we usually work with um, high risk um, young people that's vulnerable to exploitation, um, and it's always been helpful when um, MSTs come on board. I think specifically me and Charlene have worked together on quite a few occasions. Um, I think it's supported in different ways, really, because exploitation is such a um, such a wide spectrum of different things you've got to look into in terms of that contextual side. It's really difficult sometimes to manage that as an individual. So I think one of those things of being able to bounce off someone else that also has those expertise, but has a different way of working to, to yourself is always beneficial. So um, for myself, we our concentrations mainly with the young person and building that relationship and things like that um, to be able to enable that work to happen. And obviously with, with Charlene, that concentration on the the whole family and 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 looking at how that um, how, how those can be improved as well, um, just adds sort of a well, just add that bounce off each other to be able to have those different conversations and different perspectives on things. I suppose. What about you, Charlene? I feel for me um, very very similar to what you've said um, in 
and in the fact of obviously you're actually able to get that child's voice then mm -hmm. very often as an MST therapist the child actually doesn't want to engage in any of the sessions I feel that for me sometimes when I'm working with the young person obviously when I'm working with the family I'm listening to what the parents saying about the child mm -hmm. very often Josh has got a better understanding of the child and what the child's up to in the community because of the relationship that he's built up. So that then gives me the opportunity to kind of address some of those things with the parent and kind of highlight to them some of the risks that potentially are happening for their child and how they can look at addressing it or preventing their child from being involved in that sort of behaviour. Um, that's so it kind of falls in place because I feel that the team, the families that we've worked with, the child genuinely doesn't want to engage with an MST therapist at all. Um, they are just wanting to engage with Josh. And I think quite often as well, Horizons have already got that relationship before we become on board for yeah. MST starts their work. Yeah, I think that's something I was going to tell well, actually, Andrew, is that a lot of the times we're already working with the young, with the young person already, and and you know we've either asked for that extra support from 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 you guys or that's the social worker to put that referral into because we've acknowledged that actually although we're able to engage with that young person, actually we're able to do that work. Um, there is definitely that need for that for the extra support to be put in place for the whole family and to look at how. Uh, plans can be put it can be can be implemented with the family to to sort of to be another a, a prevention for anything further from happening or or looking at how parents can support better um so yeah that's definitely a definitely a factor I know that um when i've spoken to charlene she's talked about kind of lots lots of things she's learned from working with you josh and working with horizons so i'll go to you charlene first can you talk about some of those those things and how it may have changed your practice so I feel that in terms of, obviously I had knowledge around exploitation as in the generic sense of the term, how to spot signs and symptoms. However, upon working with Josh, Josh has been able to kind of fine tune my understanding of exploitation that even little things that other professionals might not seem is an issue. Actually, that's the starting of something bubbling around exploitation. Um, also, He's taught me loads in terms of actually what actions can be taken by the police and other partner agencies to kind of prevent or disrupt things out in the community. Whereas obviously previously I didn't know so much about how the partnerships work together around disruption. Whereas Josh has been able to kind of teach me those things around actually, well, this is what we should be doing this is what we can do this is what we can do for this this whereas i didn't have that knowledge before now that i've got that knowledge it's easier for me to explain to parents that actually these are the things that can happen these that, that partner agencies can support us with and it's helped parents actually be able to communicate with those partner agencies and share information with agencies such as the police, whereas families prior to that were reluctant to make contact with the police because they felt police aren't going to do anything, it's just information given to them. But once we kind of identified to the families that actually <coughs> police do do stuff with that information and action is being taken, it's probably just not as fast as what families would like it to be, but it is happening out there. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that, Charlene. Josh, working with, with Charlene, has there been anything from kind of an MST perspective that has kind of changed your practice? Definitely. Thanks, Charlene. That was really nice, that was. Um, I think from from my side, um, it was definitely, sometimes I feel I, and probably we as, as a team, we can be really young person centered which is great however it's looking more at, at the, the effects that can have on parents sometimes and we get sort of bogged down in terms of making sure that we so young person focused on that relationship building i think working with charlene it's made me uh, reflect a little bit more on that um in terms of making sure that actually we are looking at our parents and what support's being put in place there and also sort of around the plans as well of what we can do from 
from the home and from the family to help prevent that. I think that was what Charlene said already about, you know, our knowledge around the community. But actually, in terms of what we've learned from Charlene, what we've learned from, learned from other guys in MSTs, the plans around what we can do from the family home, the different approaches we can we can take in terms of speaking to parents um, and siblings as well, because let's not forget about how much exploitation can affect siblings as well. Um, and yeah, and and also just looking at those different things of um, you know different approaches that could be taken in terms of um, I know there was there's been things before in terms of the lock boxes for our young people that might be yeah, thinking about carrying offensive weapons or might feel like they have to um, those alarms that can be put on windows those are little things that we wouldn't necessarily think about but again there's approaches that. Um, Charlene spoke about and has sort of been in the back of my head now for for further for down the line is those little techniques as well we can use of little little barriers. So just just to reflect on those conversations mm -hmm. I mean um, th one of the main differences between the two teams the two MST teams in, in Sandwell is um, my team <laughs> young people where there's exploitation or a risk of exploitation and often the Horizons, who are our exploitation team, are already working with that young person. Um, and one of the main differences between the two teams is that we, we work alongside Horizons. Um, and we've got some really good partnership. And as you know, you heard Charlene and Josh talking about there, we, we kind of learn lots from each other, which is which is really positive. So we started off with kind of really trying to get from Meet in terms of what she knew about MST. So Meet was saying at the time there wasn't much she really knew about MST so it was kind of a new thing for her so we really looked at as well in terms of when an agent when as an agency we start working with the family what's that agency's sort of like feelings about us joining them so we meet with the agency um, and how so with MST we become the lead agency but we look at how that actually works alongside other agencies so Meet was saying that when we first started working with herself she felt a bit unsure I think in terms of where we're going to be placed, mm -hmm. but then after we had that conversation, we kind of met regularly. So we're okay. always informing each other in terms of what we're doing. She found MST to be really quite useful in terms of with MST because we academically, we kind of had an understanding of the factors towards the child's behaviour. So what we kind of looked at in terms of sometimes we just see the child. This is how the child's behaving. With MST, we go beyond that. What's leading up to that? What is the mm -hmm. factors? So that. Um, I'm trying to remember what else we spoke about. <laughs> that was kind of, yeah, that was kind of, that was quite useful. And in terms of we looked at, one of the things I said about meat in terms of what I got from her, because I think mm -hmm. it's a two way thing. Definitely. We learned from ages, she's ages that we learned from us. So, what was really useful was the way that meat conducted the children need meetings. Mm -hmm. So, at the meetings, meat was really good at getting the perspective from all of the agencies around the table. And really looking at what we felt wasn't working well, but also what was working well. And in some of the sessions as well, you would have like the grandmother at the time who was feeling that, you know, everything's too much for me. The child's better off in care. You know, I can't go on. Me was really good with it. actually drawing out the strengths what grandma was strength actually. Based. Yeah, really strengths based. And that came about with, in terms of myself and me meeting prior to meeting, really updating each other, knowing what's going on. I'm trying to remember what else. I think I'll add something in here. Okay. Because I know Wendy doesn't like talking positively about <laughs> But one of the things that I found um, in terms of observing Wendy, especially looking at her um, relationship, um, really a professional relationship really with Meet, is that she invited me to come and see some of the MST sessions in the home, which was really, really helpful. And again, what was really helpful is me flexibility as well, because social workers are very, very busy. But she took the time to observe Wendy in practice, ask mm -hmm. questions, there's lots of conversations outside next to the cars in terms of, you know, Wendy, that's really interesting the way that you did this, the way you did that. Also, in addition as well is um, what I found really, really helpful was uh, Meet's manager. So again, she was aligned in terms of some of the suggestions that um, we kind of brought to the table. And what was really helpful as well is on occasions, the um, the manager actually invited us to a MS Microsoft Teams meeting. Yeah. And we just would have a conversation yeah. because at certain points, the young person was at serious risk of impending care. And she just wants to kind of understand from our, our point, point of view, why do you actually feel like grandma could manage yeah. with social support, with the safety planning? Because she was obviously very, very concerned about some of the things that the young person was actually kind of hearing as well. So 
from my point of view as a manager, seeing how the social worker had support yeah. from her manager, and mm -hmm. she was actually willing to have that conversation, um, you know, conversations with with each other. It was really, really helpful. And again, also the social worker being flexible, even though she's got quite heavy case loads, just to kind of come out to see Wendy and Wendy kind of taking that time to kind of say, this is the reason why I said this, this is the reason why I said that. So I thought that was really helpful. And again, what was really, really useful as well is that in terms of reason and flexibility, when we had family therapy sessions that meet with women like you know, so the family actually had the chance to work if this is how we're feeling, you know, this is what's going on. Whereas previously, the family were quite a bit reluctant to talk to social services, but that kind of opened it up. So that was really positive as well. Really yeah. positive piece of work, I suppose. Excellent. Yeah. So did you want to go on to um, Wendy, because I know we had a recording of Wendy speaking to <laughs> the educational psychologist. It's um, been really good if we can share it. <laughs> so Wendy, do you want to reflect a little bit, because that was an excellent clip. Again, um, it's very, um, well, not very, very rare, but it's on an occasional really when we don't, a lot of MST teams don't really have um, not necessarily a close working relationship with education psychologists. Um, and we actually do um, because we've got some great um, education psychologists and one of our um, backup supervisors actually is an education psychologist, um, Alison Bailey. So she's allowed us to have that contact um, with um, inclusion support and also um, Melanie as well, who is um, her manager really kind of facilitate and open up those conversations. So, Wendy, can you remember in terms of your conversation I'm with... Um, I'm just... <laughs> it's a shame you can't play, sure you can't play something. I, I, I try, I try, I'm, sorry, I'm really sorry. You remember the conversation, so do you want me to help you? Yes, <laughs> so I was in quite a few of the multi-agency um, meetings with, with, with Helen. So I know Helen's involvement um, was with the child because the child had an EHCP, as EHCP far as I was aware, and she has been involved with the child for quite a while due yes. to his um, behaviour in the home um, and outside of the home. And I think what's really interesting really is in terms of um, Wendy aligning her a little bit further down the continuum and less focusing on the, indiv in the individual behaviour. So can you remember some of the conversations you had that kind of helped? Align her on the spot. Wait, no, on the spot. Yeah, on the spot. I think some of the conversations we had was, which was again with looking at the kind of wider family, um, kind of like the thoughts and feelings around okay. what was going on. Where Helen was saying she usually wouldn't get that, so it was like understanding the kind of factors in terms of what the other family members were feeling in terms right. of the situation. I'm trying to remember the conversation. Um, I watched a bit of it, and I do Thank remember. You. I do remember okay. her picking up on basically saying that. Um, even though we're professionals working together, it's okay to disagree with each other as well. Yes. And basically, okay. increasing communication to basically find the best outcome. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with just disagreeing with because we all have the best yeah. interests yeah. of the and child. That was, that was yeah. 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 And that yeah. was it. Yeah. So we kind of looked at how we kind of overcame this difference of opinion because as more agencies working together, we've all got our remit. Mm -hmm. One of the things we and Helen discussed in terms of when we had an intervention we wanted to put in place and we had that big difference of opinion, what could we do? To actually get a result that's going to benefit from the family. So it took a lot of us talking, reflecting, and kind of like looking at the pros and cons of the situation, really looking at the family, but also looked at in terms of increasing the family's responsibility. If we put X in place, how would that increase the family's responsibility? If we didn't put it in place, what would that look like? So there's a lot of talk and a lot of conversation in terms of giving the best results. So hopefully we'll be able to send that. <laughs> and thank you for that, um, Kane. Thank you, um, Wendy. So do we have any more? We clips had one to more show? clip, which okay. was um, with uh, Martina from my team and Chrissy from the police. Okay. Um, I, while we were while Wendy was talking, my watch, which is next to my phone, was beeping away, and it's my team going. Don't have to beep, don't. If you saw me looking down, that's that's what I was doing. <laughs> Sorry, I and, I, <laughs> um, and I don't know whether Chrissy is kind of on the on the call at all, whether she would like to say anything or whether Martina does want to say anything. But it was a conversation between Martina and Chrissy. They they worked together um quite quite regularly. Um, and they were kind of reflecting on what they've kind of learned from each other. Um, I know for, for Martina, she was saying lots of the processes from the police and, and just kind of be, having somebody to be able to ask those questions, you know, what does that mean 
like what can you know what's going on when this is happening has been really helpful um, there was a, a part of the clip was actually um, Martina asked a question to, to Chrissy of yeah. what three words would describe our relationship and I can't remember the exact words and I wish yeah. I took, took Chrissy's on Chrissy's here yeah, I think one of them was, I think one of my, my words was um, difficult at times and I'm sure a few of you will laugh, Lloyd's nodding his head, I think there were probably days where he saw my name and just thought, oh no, it's her again. Um, but I think what one of the things that I said was, you know, we, we get to work really closely with you guys um, and we speak to each other on, you know, sometimes an hourly or daily basis and we come from really different professional backgrounds and we come at it from completely different angles obviously you know police it's very much catch and convict and we want to be able to go and do what we want to do and I think one of the things that I've learned is you know that sometimes we do have to just stand back and, and watch and wait and and sometimes we have to have really not difficult but frank and open and honest conversations and we don't always agree um, and I think it's really good and, you know, the, the people that I can see here that I've worked with, you know, we've, we've all been able to have those conversations and have those professional disagreements and still contact each other an hour later and go, oh, can you just tell me what this means? Or can you, and you, you know, it, it's, it's always been like that. And I think for me, that's something that's really positive. And the fact that we can all get on as professionals can only ever be, you know, a positive for the family because we need to work together as well as the family need to work with us. I would agree with that. And yeah, I think, definitely. funny enough, this morning, um, Andrew and I, um, Claire Martin, our, our manager, we had um, a meeting with um, some police officers to actually look at the MST protocol with the police, just to um, kind of update it. And I think looking back, um, me and the, um, the other officer there, Dave Rogers, we actually felt like we actually had a really good collaborative um, working relationship. And the protocol um, between MST and the police is really helpful because we're both in it together in terms of minimising the arrests, minimising charge, and definitely minimising um, the um, custody of a child. And even the conversation that we had today, we're putting certain things in place so we actually can have those conversations, you know, out of hours. We're able to kind of say, look, please, you know, so they've taken this young person to a police car, we're taking to police custody. We have the names and numbers of other family members, our safety plan you know Andrew and I are always available out of hours so the the police relationship even though it's been up and down really really helpful <laughs> in terms of actually our work with um young people and families you are now going to have an MST therapist Wendy Saunders reflect on a multi-agency working with Princess Trust social care the police and the school with a case she has with the therapist after Wendy will have a conversation with the family so we can hear their perspective. Many thanks, Wendy. First of all, I'd really like to thank all of you for giving the time to be here. Really appreciate that. Before we do the introduction, I'm just going to explain to everybody what this part's all about. So we really want to look at how we work together with agencies and families that we're working with for the, the best result for the family. So as you know, all of us have different roles and responsibilities. But how do we collaborate that for good working? So before we start, if one of you can just introduce yourself and just say a little about your room that you work for and how you usually work with them. Start with you, Jess. I'll go first. Uh, my name's Jessica Webb. I'm a social worker at, um, in care management team three within the Trust. Um, and my main job role really is to support families and um, help children who are at risk. I'm uh, PC Nick Stevenson. I'm a youth defender manager at Sand Railway Midlands. Um, my role is to look for a use and look for signposting to steer them away from trouble um, and also there is that an important side to that as well. I'm Mike, I'm very nice Chuck, I'm, I work for Essence Police as a PCSO, I'm currently on comment to Kinsey's Trust, we run 12 week courses for young people aged between 16 and 25, not in work for education, uh, it's a bit like a college to get level one qualification uh, in teamwork and employability. Yeah. We also had school with this family, um, working with this family, and also we had Liam from Horizons, they're not with us today. Before we start, I'm just going to talk briefly about the family that we worked with, and then kind of get your perspective. We worked with a family who was a single mother, as Lloyd said she's here today, 
you know, working part time. The referral charge, Shandon, is 16, and you also had a sibling who was nine. So there was multiple behaviours that ranged from um, physical aggression, verbal aggression, property damage, missing school, um, community factors, and also missing therapy. So, before, so with MST, we usually join agencies that are already working with families. So, just wondering if you could tell us a bit, mainly you, Jessica. Tell us a bit about the difficulties you were having before actually MST. What did you know about MST? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I picked up this case in like November last year, maybe very early December. Um, and at the time, there was quite a lot going on. Um, the young person was actually not even living in the family home at the time. Um, he was living with a family friend and had been for quite a few weeks. Yeah. Um, and what led to that was a, an argument between him and mum. Yeah. Um, police had been called and he'd actually left the family home for the night initially, mm -hmm. um, just to sort of calm down. It was advised by the police that it was probably best for an overnight stay somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and, and he remained there. Um, and the difficulty was that the longer he remained with this family friend, the, the bigger divide there was in, in the yeah. relationship between him and mum. And there wasn't that ability to, you know, make that progress and, and sort of, um, break down those barriers so that was the situation that we were facing it, it was difficult to understand why he didn't want to return home yeah. and also the relationship between mom and the family friend that he was staying with yeah. was very difficult as well and yeah. um, so that added to it um, to be honest now the only thing that I knew about MST was mm -hmm. that they were kind of a step up from FSW and, yeah. and then I got really confused because I was yeah. like okay family support, MST, therapies, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure whatsoever yeah. but with one of my other cases that um, when I when it was allocated to me MST were at the end of their work mm -hmm. so I still managed to speak to the worker um, within that team and just find out what had happened obviously she wasn't going to be working with the family going forward um, but I was able to find out what her intervention had been you know yeah. what the service did in the first place so that was really worthwhile in order for me then to know with this family what yeah. kind of referral to make. So before we started working and I will continue to yeah. before we started working Sorry, I did no, <laughs> we started working with you so you, you, you kind of hear that you know MST is going to be working alongside you with the family what's your initial feelings or thoughts around that I mean or, or is there an initial thoughts or feelings? Um, a lot of unknowns, to be yeah. honest. Um, like I said, I'd spoken to another worker in your team who had worked with another family that yeah. I was um, involved with as well. Um, and it just sounded fantastic, the work that she'd yeah. done. I think what my understanding was, it was that you guys work with families where there are problems within the relationship, within yeah. the family home, which is then causing other factors as well. Yeah. So behaviours outside of the family home, you know, maybe with extended family, within yeah. school, That's things true. like that. Um, so initially, that was my understanding. And then also for yourself, Nick, from a police perspective, yeah. in terms of when you're working with your people in your, your room, what sort of difficulties do you encounter? Um, well, obviously, they see an offender yeah. manager as the yeah. police, and usually that youth child yeah. is always, well, majority of the times, have bad experiences with the police, whether they've seen them arrest a family member yeah. or whether they've been stopped searching the street. So it is a very difficult, that first meeting with the youth, I think is really, really important. Um, I had a, the, I'm from a neighbourhood background, so okay. I used to work on neighbourhood uh, yeah. police. I was out in uniform yeah. responding. And I, I had a of MST, I mean, that was about two or years ago, but I've never really worked with anybody from MST. Okay. Um, now, we get the list of people you're working with and I try and promote the neighbourhoods. Yeah. If you're working with them, that is a really good way into the family. Because if you go there on the first visit and you know that they're working, say, with you, you approach the family. And so I've worked with Wendy yeah. before. Yeah. I think it's a real a real positive way in the family and the child. Because you've, yeah. <clears throat> you've had that conversation already, yeah. a bit of background about that family and yeah. what's going on. It sounds like just having a list, like you're saying, where you kind of like you already know families that like, where they're still yeah. working with the families you yeah. can share seems to be really, really positive. Yeah, yeah. For both of you, when MST started working, we started working together, how did you find MST in, in terms of those initial sessions when we all started working together? We might get a children in need meeting and we've got to have that kind of collaborative approach. How did you find? I thought so. 
you carry on. I thought it was fantastic. I think one of the difficulties that we find sometimes in social care, especially if, if families have had intervention and, you yeah. know, for, for, you know, historical intervention or I think just the stigma around social workers coming to your home. Families can be a little bit defensive and, you know, the barriers are up yes. and, it, it, and it's sometimes, not, not with every family, but sometimes it's difficult to get that engagement straight away, yeah. build that rapport and actually get to the root of, you know, the, what the problems are or what the concerns are within yeah. the family. I think what MST, um, what MST do brilliantly and obviously for yourself is that you kind of move in, like you rock up on the day with your suitcase <laughs> and, you and your bag and you, you literally, you're in that family home. And I think that's brilliant because it's really intensive. So yeah. you're saying to families, look, I'm going to come around two, three times a week. Yeah. I'm going to be on the phone constantly if you need me on there. And it really gets that sort of that connection yeah. made with the family in order so that you can see from their perspective what the difficulties are. Yes. I think, you know, social care sometimes it has its limitations in the sense that Parents are telling you what they're experiencing. Yeah. Or even children are telling you what they're yeah. experiencing. But you're not there at that moment in time to see it for yourself. Whereas I think MST, you have that inside view because you're in the heat of every yeah. argument, every, <laughs> we are you know, people. every high and every low within that family. So, so how does that work as well? How does that help the staff, like you said, with MST, be kind of in the, in the heat in terms of what's going on? How does that help you in terms of your reading? Um, that's what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that helps me because it, it gives me that understanding as well. You know, we both can't be there at the same time. So yeah. I think that collaborative working, I can sort of, you know, we can have that multi-agency discussion, yeah. either just as like a, you know, a quick pick up the phone or over teams or within the, the statutory meetings that we have in order to say, oh, just to let you know, did you know this? Yeah. Or, you know, you can say, well, I did observe this the other day and that could be why. Um, so it just fills in each other's gaps in knowledge really I think that that's you know it's really beneficial to work together in that way. I know you were going to say something before. Um, yeah I'd like to say I, I mean for me I mean it's kind of a, a side proof in the pudding really yeah. it's because you know there are names who I see in, through intelligence who when they've been in custody and you know in obviously in this case the real positive for me is that we ain't we, we're not getting that anymore yeah, yeah. and and that that's a massive has a massive impact obviously on the police and our, our time at responding um so you know that is a, a massive positive watching the, the family yeah. the child develop yeah. gain gain them into things that they enjoy it's just such a massive difference what about yourself what's the how do you have, have you had any difficulties engaging families it's difficult to get people to sign up for the thing it's, we need to it really help some like ourselves without yeah. that us a lot of our recruitment because Recruitment is the hardest part of getting the kids to come along to the to the thing. So having you guys breaking down the barriers at first is always yeah. helps us because I went to Shandon to his home address with mum, we were very supportive. Yeah. We had him on a course probably for about 10 days. And he's a really nice lad, really engaged, really got on with the other people. And part of our course is helping each other because yeah. we take young people with more backgrounds and all abilities. So we've got people with vulnerabilities like Shandon, yeah. other people with learning difficulties, we try and get them to help each other. And Shandon's really good with that and he really got involved. Mm -hmm. And like part of our course, we don't tend to do a lot of writing, so we take photos of them yes. and then do it. The, the, the last write then is this is me doing this task, this is yeah. me in archery, this is me doing various different things, different uh, team build exercises. Yeah. So I think for someone like Shanda, this was really good. Yeah. So you're so, saying kind of having that first initial policy working with families yeah, but, is such a yeah, in terms like, of working with yourself. Yeah, I guess the foot in the door, which is yeah. the hardest part. It's it it sold to anybody who's San well, or there's Warsaw, Dudley, or Rampton. When I was thinking about um, Sharon and Shannon that we're working with, and when I thought about it, yeah. there's like six agencies in the family. You've got ourselves, you've got social care, you've got yeah. police, you've got police's trust, you had Horizons, and we also had school. So for her family, who is that one myself who's working through stuff with, with a child, and then you have six agencies. How did we, six agencies together, we're not all here together, how did we make sure that we were aligned and that we were working together? And we as an agency and collaboratively are not adding extra pressure onto the families. What do you think we did? How did we do it? Communication. It was email we wish every day, wasn't it? Sometimes yes. and conversations. Any problems I could tell you, whatever problems you could tell me. Yeah. But, uh, and like with that communication, <laughs> I think Chris mentioned it, he was a, yeah. an officer I know. Sometimes you don't agree with things. No, you don't agree. I mean, 
you've probably to the place where we think the worst. Mm-hmm. Every time the eyes have gone, it's straight away when they open the door, what's happening? Yeah. They think they think the negative, even though I mean, yeah. like plain clothes. Um, so you you kind of always think, and yeah, sometimes yeah. it's about bouncing, like you know, the stuff we know. Like, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on this? We we've been told this. What do you do you think about it? And yeah. sometimes you might say, well, you know, no, I don't think that. We're thinking, well, I'm sure it, it might. It, I'm sure it is. Uh, but it's if you can communicate correctly, you know, uh, I think you can get over that and then you still want the same goal for that person and family and i think it's the, the i think it was a communication between us what did that communication look like i know you said michael was emailing the other day was emailing each other so what did that communication look like for you to is that communication phone calls and teams meeting texts at nine o'clock at night i know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> 24 hours <laughs> 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 um, you know the, the major yeah. phone call i've literally yeah. sat outside my yeah. mother-in-law's house to pick the kids up yeah. on the phone to you but I'll i do a bit. <laughs> 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 and i've had to lock the door because the kids are trying to knock on the window yeah. like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> like here. um but and and like what you was just saying i know i'm going back a bit but yeah. about you know, passing ideas across, and Definitely. I know that obviously when Shannon's name cropped up to yourselves a couple of times, you immediately rang me and said, you know, like his name might have, you know, come yeah. up here and there. But what do you think about it, or yeah. what what do you think he's actually up to, you yeah. know, down this place or that place yeah. or whatever? Yeah. And and it's throwing those ideas and hypotheses around, isn't it? And, and actually reaching a, a conclusion together. Sometimes a lot of funny things are trying as well, isn't it? Yeah, don't, don't yeah. Assistance, you know, that's, so that, do you know about that? So things, but he's uh, like that, and I think one of the good things, um, lots of things that I took from that, remember, and before we had the two meetings, me and yourself, we get together. Because you know we'd MST, and the family said we work with, things can change within half an hour. Yeah. So it was always about keeping ourselves updated, you know, before meetings, you know, that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even like with, with MST, I mean, obviously yourself, yeah. but also Lloyd. I mean, I'm sure Lloyd remembers a very epic charging leave meeting that we had once upon a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, yeah. um, I'm just going to say chaotic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but it's having that multi-agency impact, isn't it? And, and being able to speak to each other. And me and yourself went to a school meeting once where there'd been an incident at school. School phoned me in, I phoned yeah. you, we went together. And yes. I think it had more of an impact because it felt like a team around the family rather Definitely. than me and family sat just speaking yeah. to school. Um, it was like more of a team effort, you know, and, and we was able to reach goals and, and produce outcomes from that. And how did we, because I think this is important as well, how did we deal with differences? So I'm going to bring, bring up an example. I know we've got Shandon here today, so Shandon doesn't worry, we shared this stuff. So there was a particular time when we, there was this mention that Shandon might have some sort of gang affiliation. Yeah. So me and Jess, we were like, nah, <laughs> we can't see that. There's no evidence, but for yourself, Nick, you yeah. had, you know, you kind of were, shall I use the word convinced this might be going on? So yeah. we had different opinions, and yeah. the outcome for that, if that was the case, the interventions would be massively different and would be safeguarding. So how did we actually get over that? Because we and Jess were side and there's no evidence, Nicholas, you were yeah. thinking, but actually, what did we do? What steps did we take? I think it, it just goes back to the, the mm. communication again for me. Yeah. Um, like you say, you, you were seeing like the family yeah. like a lot more, so you probably had a, a better overview of, of, I mean, my first meeting, I was with yourself, I was yes. with Shandon. Yeah. I don't think he ever said one is one word to me yeah, until yeah. I mentioned football and he, he raised and his head a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him sitting here today yeah. and we've had a we have a conversation about football. Um well I think it's I think it's you you I kind of went with your judgment. Um because like you say, we we get this like information coming to us. Um and but like if you know obviously the family better, so you you sometimes even as, as the police, we we are not the be all and end all. Yeah. You know, we you know, it's not what we say is right, you know, with the police have got it wrong. Um, so so like I did bench obviously as yeah. soon as I had that information is to, you know, pass it to you and say, Well what do you yeah. what do you think? And I think one example of that was Shandon had once done a journey to Kidminster. Yes. Yeah. And that yes. had cropped up with the police and yeah. it was a concern yeah. that he was yeah. involved yeah. because at the time there was a county line yeah. line between here yeah. and Kidderminster and obviously that was sort of a high profile yeah. area. 
Um, but myself and you knew that he had a football trial. I remember seeing Kidimista. Yes. And, you know, Alarm, I was like, I lost my hair, but I'd already lost it by then. But I saw Kidimista. But that's why it's so yeah. important for us to keep in touch yeah, and the fact that we both yeah. knew that. You yeah. know, we offered an explanation. For, I mean, we we'll talk about that. Yeah. And one of the things that I've really found quite useful in this afternoon about that really meeting the family being that appropriate level yeah and one of the things about when you come you came around and like you said you spoke to Shandon about football yeah. and that was it that was appropriate level for him yeah and we only could find that out by talking yeah. sharing what we know about the family yeah yeah I mean like I say I felt real when I met you there I, yeah. I felt a bit felt comfortable straight away mm. I know you've got that rapport yeah. uh, which is quite from a place I think that's, that's massive Especially when you are involved with the management side of that person. What do you think the benefits are? So, like you said, you spoke about pre MST, MST working together, and the, the value about all of us sharing information and working as part of the team, and actually it helps the family and the young person as well. What do you see as the benefits, and how has that changed the way that you might approach families? In the future? Oh, well, head on here. I shouldn't say that. I'm just you know, I go back to it's like the course of service and I know you you talk management to talk about cost for involvement yeah. with you know, people being arrested, people going through the, the criminal justice system yeah. and and you know, this is an exact as an example where I, I yeah. would come into work on a Monday at one point thinking I'm just waiting for that call to see what maybe Shandon had done. Well, I can I come in now. Yeah. And there's, there's somebody else who's come along, obviously, because I manage a few. Yes. But, my, but like, I haven't got that worry to yeah, yes. um, for me now. Um, and I just I just think it's that, that having another agency involved to their own expertise, yeah. it can only benefit to be able to ripple effect with the other agencies, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I, and like I said, I can't say it enough, really, when I've been on the neighbourhood side, where we've had, we've had struggles getting to, just even to get through that front door to yes. sit down with the family. But like, with MST involved, I just think it's like the doors are for help and yeah, the police yeah. really. You, you've still got to, you've still got to have that skill set to, to kind of so they can engage. Seeing the police maybe yeah. in a different light. But yeah, I think you've you, you've kind of you've opened that door yeah. for the agencies really for me. One thing with MST, so obviously we're working together with the case, okay, we're working together with the case, but you don't just inherit MST therapists yet, you inherit the on-call therapists as well. You know, on view, Jess, you come in the morning, you turn your laptop on, and there is a sequence. Mm -hmm. So the sequence for everybody is just is when we have an incident that happens outside of the normal nine to five, the on-call therapist will um, write the sequence down, update it, send it to out of hours, also to the social worker. Jess turns her laptop on in the morning, and, and there it is. What do you do with those sequences and how do you use that again to work together? Well, let me tell you, there's nothing like coming back after a week or two weeks annual leave to many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I think one of the things that you've started doing recently, which is really beneficial to myself, okay. is adding them to LCS. I think that's yes, fantastic because yes. prior to that, I was doing it yes. um, and, you, you, you know, Although MST was using their own system, I do think it's, you know, it's integral that we, we sort of that. integrate that, that information. So that's brilliant. Um, with the sequences, I obviously read through them and um, find out what's happened and then go back and read them again and find out what initiated it. So what was the trigger point for, for that incident, whether it be a verbal, verbal disagreement, you know, an argument, something violent, um, property damage within the home. Yeah. What actually started that? Um, and sometimes you find that at the start, sometimes you find it at the end of the sequence, because if, it, if um, a family's made a phone call to the on-call and it's already very heightened, yeah. you normally got the heightened bit first and then the come down yeah. after. Um, what I think is really important with those and, and brilliant is the fact that you then keep in touch with the family afterwards. So there might be three sequences, yeah. but they're all about the same incident. Um, and you can really see the progress made when people have calmed down or, you know, there's been, they've been able to talk it through. So we're back. So Wendy did a wonderful job having a reflective conversation with the agencies working with the family that you actually now see. So I'm going to hand over to Wendy, who is going to have another reflective conversation with the family. First of all, I really like to thank all of you for coming here today. You know, Sharon, I know that you changed your shift. 
Yeah, Sky, we picked you up straight from school. Yeah, Sky is <laughs> here. And, and Shandon, I know that Shandon has a football practice tonight. And again, you still come today. So really, really do appreciate that. So what would be interesting for all of us to understand, actually from a family's perspective, what is it like when agencies start working with you? Sort of like looking at what's happening before MST, what MST started, and where we are today. So pre-MST, what was that, what was life like for you, Sharona? What was happening in your family before we came before, in? Before we were even on the scene. Okay. It was a nightmare, really nightmare going on. Until you guys stepped in and things got improved. It was, at first, I didn't want to, but then um, you're coming around yeah. and like giving an idea how to let the relationship work and stuff yeah. like that. It was really good. And I, I want to say, I miss you guys a lot. Oh, I miss you too. I miss you too. You know, just a few minutes ago, you said that life was a nightmare. Can you just post that nightmare? What was happening? Well, me and Shannon wasn't getting along. Arguments, fighting. You could think a young kid, a teenager with his mom. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with him? It's happening so often that I can't think of him. How was that for you? It was like 19 years since I was and did you work with any agents of previous times? Yeah, I worked with Sanwell. I worked with Sanwell Council yeah. before. Yeah. And um it was good, I should say. But since you and Jess come on board, there was more improvement. Okay. Yeah. And you could see where we were going down the line. It was very good. Before we go into really look at that, Shandon was just wondering for myself. And at any time, Shandon, if you kind of feel like we're actually asking too much questions, we need to go, that's fine. But for yourself, Shandon, before MST and involved in the family, one described life as being like a nightmare, but what was it like for you? Um. Right. Right. You're not seeing a nightmare that mum. No. <laughs> Over exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think MST would have MST would need to be involved? Do you think we came into Oh did it help? So for Sharon Girls and and Shandon. What is it like? Um, so we're saying previously that with yourself is about six ages. So what is it like in terms of family on a daily basis when you have agents working with you? How is that for you in terms of the good and the not so good? The first agency I had before you guys, as I said, wasn't really good. They came in my home, they like everything is good. And then when they left, we had the same meeting, you know, when he's coming on to the same meeting. Yeah. Right, they say something. Right, example. So when we went to Sharon and she said she's going to do this and she's going to do that, but as soon as our back is turned, she does something else. When I said to them before all of this, if Shandon hasn't followed rules, he won't be going to football, and that's what I did, and that's what I did for doing that. Yeah. So what was different about the way that Jess? Jess was working with you first of all. What was yeah. different in terms of Jess approaching Okay. Shannon was not home for about what? Four months? And no one could have taken Shannon back home, but Jess went and get in. That's the first big step. Yeah, she went and bring home Shannon as a Christmas gift. This is a Christmas present. Yeah. Is this one back? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, with Jess, there's a lot of things she should have done. Yeah, probably she get tired of me calling her, and you probably get tired of me no, calling her. get tired. And the, on, and the on call lines, yes, they're fine. really excellent. You guys are really a billion excellent. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, and you, Wendy, you're so amazing. 
anyway, like when he's come out to see me, he will come and get me at work, he will go and get Sky and stuff like that. It's really, you know, good knowing you and knowing that someone cares a lot. One of the things I really liked when I came in today, so you, um, the uncle system, you used the uncle system, you spoke to yes. Gemma and Natalia. Yeah, yeah. And what was really, really loved to see today, when you came in today and you realised, oh my gosh, that's Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, I oh know that lady, you've never met her. I never met her. But the time you spent on the uncle, how did you find the uncle? How useful is that for yourselves? I find it very good, very excellent. Because mm -hmm. time I couldn't manage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I say that, I say that, you know, have a background. Yeah. Sometimes I have no patience. Yeah. But Gemma and um, Natalia, yeah. they're really good. They will tell me, just go in the room, <laughs> have a cup of tea yeah. and stuff like that. And even when I'm ready to call the police, I said, no, don't call the police. Yeah. Just let things calm down. Let it stay in his room yeah. and calm stuff down. Yeah. It was really good oh. and it was really great. Yeah. And for you, Shandon, just kind of trying to get from a child's perspective, what was it like? So all of a sudden, you've got agencies coming in, you've got MST, you're talking about things like rewarding consequences. You need to meet your curfew. You know, how was that like for you in terms of you know, sitting down and talking about these things for you? What was, what was going on for you? Um, okay. Okay. When I first met everyone, yeah. and then once I had like, get to know people. Speaking, you know, everyone. People speaking helps, like you said, it was quite awkward at first, but speaking. Yeah. Not right. to everyone, but like, even Jess and um, the guy that came from the British Trust. Leah, oh no, um, Chuck. Chuck, sorry, and, I think um, Jack. Yeah. Oh, he's from the college, that, um, he's from Ibrahim to the college. Okay. Yeah. So how did you go about, and again, it's just really interesting to hear from a child's point of view. So we've come along, we're talking about rewards and consequences. Like you said, at first it's quite awkward, but once we speak, it becomes a bit How did you go about using what we were discussing with you and mum? How did we almost like start thinking, okay, this is what mum and mum's asking me to do, now I'll do it? Um, I didn't really do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not something because you're doing really well, Shandon. Just look at the bigger picture. Okay. Come up right straight. You know what I wanted. So just let me see. No, that's and really we have been a better relationship no. that we never had. No, that's really yeah. good. And also, for the on call Shenzhen for yourself, because of many times, and I think this is just really important to factor to look at as well as this with young people, many times we've not met the curfew. So here we go, Gemma or Natalia or myself, we texting you what might be like two in the morning. Gender mom's looking for you. You did respond. I mean, what was that like for a young person? It's two in the morning, it adds, MSC uncle, where are you? Shandon mom's looking for you. Thinking how you get my number. Do you say that has been has any sort of benefit for yourself and your mom that we do? Yeah, and kind of really trying to support your mom to find you. So it's mom trying to look with you. Do you say that as any sort of benefit? You might not as a young person. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, we, okay. So, Shandon, I'm really got sitting here as a, and I will say as an MST. So we have this little joke. I'm Auntie yeah. Wendy. <laughs> so I'm really sitting here, really proud of the good effort that you're putting in the change, you Shandon. I really, I, I think if you and your mom could tell everyone in terms of what life is like for you now, because you've done exceptionally well. And I think as an MST therapist, and here's my speech, as a grandmother and as a mom, I'm so proud of how far you've come and can you let everybody know what you're doing now in the college that you're attending and all about your football I think it'd be really good for everybody to do. Um, so I'm studying at UCB and cookery and uh, playing semi-pro for Redditch United. And you worked part-time in Caribbean so that's fantastic. Um, how is your relationship being now, how is you? Great. Oh, fantastic. And I'm going to ask you the same question that Andrea put out there. <laughs> how would you describe MST, MST in three words? What would you say about it? I would say you're good, excellent, oh. more excellent. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself, Shandon? Um, how, would you, how would you describe your, your time with MST? Um, 
Mm-hmm. Excellent. Sometimes annoying. <laughs> it has to be. Um, yes. But it works. Yeah, it works. It works. Oh, but it works. Helpful. helpful and but it works. Oh, thank you. Thank you so, so much, um, the family. Thank you so, so much for coming here. It's not easy um, sharing your story to the world. I think what I really um, love about you, um, Sharon, is that you're so, so honest. You're so, so transparent. If you're having a day where you're crying, you cry. If you have the day where you're laughing at our little jokes, you know, sometimes cover the cases. And it's so good to see you, Shandon. You blossom as a, as a, as a young man. And I, Wish you well at college and with your with your football career as well. So you're a great example. Thank you. And thank you, Sky, for coming oh, Scott, along do you as want well. Oh, she said thank you guys for helping us very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Isn't that amazing to hear the perspective of a family and a young person as well? Wow, Angie, we made it to the end. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, Also, um, Michael has left, our co-host, and he just wants to um, thank us really for being part of this journey. I just want to thank Michael as well if he watches this. It was so helpful for him to be part and parcel of actually co-hosting today. I just wanted to share with you the cupcake. I said I would. There you go. You can get it even closer. They're absolutely amazing. Just to make everybody jealous (laughs) who's, who's not here. Um, so Lloyd and I just wanted to thank everybody for their time and their support and thank all the, the families that we work with or the professionals that we work with um, and just a great partnership working really. Definitely and I want to thank everybody that's tuned in. Um, obviously we have recorded um, today so we're going to be sending it out anyways to, to the wider trust and others. We also want to thank you to the, the MSC therapists, um, thank the BSOs, Kane, who has been a master of technicians, has been our director, our producer. I also want to thank um, Jen um, as well. Wendy for just, honestly, she was the one that engaged and, and managed to get to some of the people here today. And everybody else really who has kind of helped us, um, Jackie Hodgkins um, as well, it's been really, really helpful just to kind of help us kind of set up um, in this room as well. So we want to close by um, welcoming um, Stephen Gauntley, who's on our screen now, who is the Head of Operations for San Rose Children's Trust, who will hopefully provide his reflection and closing statement. So from Andrew and I, just thank you so much for, for logging on and I hopefully you've had a, a better understanding in terms of um, why we're actually quite successful in our multi-agency and work with others. So thank and you. I, and I didn't know while Stephen's talking whether therapists actually wanted to come in this room just so they can wave and you know who they are. You can do therapists <laughs> if you want to come in. You can come in. <laughs> but um, Stephen, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd, uh, and, and thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, I, I can imagine you're really sort of stressed out by tech, some of the technology not working. And thinking, oh my. So I, I felt for you. But actually, you know, we, we don't need technology to work uh, to demonstrate just the passion that you guys share for. You know, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. And, you know, what shone through is your, you know, Lloyd, Andrew, your hard work, dedication, and Ma- Michael, thank you so much for your sort of contribution as the ho- hosting the show. Uh, the, the, the event today has been amazing. I, I guess f- for me, um, one of the things sort of which that stands out is that co- collaboration. You know, listening to Nikki and James from CAMS, Josh and Charlene from MST and Horizons, Wendy, police, educational psychologists, it just shows that they're working together, that collaborative working absolutely makes a difference. And that's testament to some of the sort of um, case studies we've heard today. I mean, I don't know if Shandon's still there, but an amazing story. And thank you so much, um, Shandon and his family for, for, for um, sharing that information. And thank you, um, Auntie Wendy, uh, clearly you've made such an impact on that family, uh, which is amazing. Thank you, Jess, and everybody who's been involved with that family. It's just amazing and, and just sat here kind of humbled. Um, I think about my own childhood, you know, it brought me right back. So young lad on a council stay, you know, I, I wasn't the, um, well, I got excluded from school, naughty lad, I guess I was. 
And I thought, actually, if I had those services back then, that would have been my life, earlier life would have been so different. You know, I got, you know, I managed to sort of get out of some of the difficulties I were in. But it actually, I just said, you know, if I had those services back then, I think um, I wouldn't have gone through some of the things I did when I as a teenager, but got through that. Um, I think Sandwell were extremely proud of, of our services, but particularly proud of our MST services and the collaboration um, we have working together clearly has such a positive impact on the work we do and the families we support. You know, quite often working with families who, who are at breaking point, you know, and building that tr those trusting relationships with families and working with family strength is key. And absolutely, you can see, you know, the real impact of that today. Um, just amazing. So part of, you know, as Samuel Trust and Children's Trust, we know, you know the, the best sort of outcome for children is we work together closely and work collaborative, collaboratively uh, we're t together. And what we're trying to do, we're, we're, uh, some people may may know, not know, we're, we're looking at a different kind of an operating model in Sandwell, but with a clear focus of sort of getting closer to our communities, getting closer to our partners, so we can work together more intensively to deliver those outcomes what are really making a difference. I often hear um, of, of multiple examples of young people being problematic, losing their way on the edge of care, but following MST interventions and the support from partners, you know, turning their lives around and making a positive impact on society, just like Shandon is, you know, is the driver of all of this. So I, I just want to say a, a massive, massive thank you to everyone. Don't worry, you know, that some of the technology fails. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, what shone through is your hard work, dedication and, you know, absolutely proud, proud of what you guys do, proud of working uh, in, in Sandwell uh, with, with our partners. I guess it says on the agenda now that we're going to mingle and refreshments. It's kind of hard for me to mingle. I mean, in, in Sheffield at the minute, so sorry, can't be there. But certainly what I will do, I might have a cheeky refreshment when I turn my camera off and celebrate the success, celebrate the collaboration and, and celebrate the number of sort of the, the difference we've made to so many families in Sandwell due to you guys. So thank you so much. You know, thank you. So proud of you. Thank you, Lloyd, uh, Andrea. Thank you guys and thank you for tuning in. Bye. See everybody. Bye bye. bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. bye.